So there's been three counter movements. So the first two uh, uh, counter movements are the Sagebrush Rebellion, uh, which is a kind of local rights movement to fight against federal control of, of federal land, in, normally in the, almost exclusively in the western part of the United States. Um, that, was, that started in 1976 and largely ended by 1982. It was uh, joined by President Reagan when he was campaigning. He said, I'm a sagebrush rebel. And the effort was to move federal lands into the state, uh, into the jurisdiction of the states. Um, but what Reagan wanted to do was privatize that land, and that just killed everything because all those subsidies to industry would have been, would, would have been halted. And so the, the sagebrush rebellion essentially died there. The second uh, regional movement had some national uh, headlines, but for the most part was uh, also in the United States West to um, open up federal lands for exploitation of natural resources without any restrictions. Also to protect private property rights from any environmental rules, such as the Endangered Species Act. So there are some conditions where if you find an endangered species on your land, then you, you can't, you're limited on what you can do. So they were very much opposed to that, and one of their main goals openly was to destroy environmentalism. So the main person who was kind of organizing the wise, this was the wise use movement, um, was openly uh, saying that one of his primary goals was to do those things, open up federal lands, but also destroy environmentalism. This did not catch on because most of American, uh, the, the American public believed that environmental protection was a public interest. Uh, and the uh, attempt from Reagan to openly endorse one of these movements led to a backlash. Coffers and membership of environmental groups ballooned. The third and more successful counter movement is the uh, environmental skepticism movement, but um, this also spins out the climate change counter movement, all of which are meant to uh, deny the authenticity of environmental uh, problems by contesting environmental science. So that, that effort then confused the public and has become more successful and has empowered uh, the, the current president to openly be more anti-environmental. My understanding, not being inside the EPA, this is only kind of word you know, on the street kind of thing, but one of the more important things I've heard is is that during the Reagan administration, there was an effort to really kind of slow down the process of deregulation um, because the, the lifetime bureaucrats really know how the system works and they know the things you have to do. And they really ended up helping protect some of uh, the environmental, protect the, the US from some of those deregulatory efforts. My understanding is that now, uh, because you have a leader like Andrew Wheeler who used to be the lobbyist for uh, Murray Energy, so Robert Murray is one of the people that's handing a wish list to the administration of what they want to do, that there's a sense that there's not a lot that the lifetime bureaucrats have. And so there has been an exodus of, of people leaving EPA. There, and my understanding is that there is a morale, you know, that there's, there's a sense of a lack of hope. Um, these are people who have dedicated their lives to protecting the environment, and um, it doesn't seem like they're, you know, they work for the Environmental Protection Agency. It's, <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't work for the just the environmental not protection agency. It's... The larger public now has uh, adopted to a large degree corporate interests as if they were their own. Um, so for example, in the climate denial efforts, a lot of people have adopted what would be really elite interests as if they, it was their own against what would be public interest protections. So a lot of environmental laws are protecting the larger public health. Uh, but a good portion of the American public has now followed um, conservative elites towards less and less environmental concern and become more polarized against, uh, say, uh, Democrats and, and progressives who become more and more environmentally concerned. So this then means that it starts to become a partisan polarization issue and people and just lean towards opposing environmental concerns, even though it might benefit them.